Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This video lesson is for Thermodynamics 1 for chemical engineers. And we are looking in chapter 3 of our textbook at volumetric properties of pure substances. And specifically, we're going to be looking at compressibilities of single phase systems. All right, so we want to look at the relationship between specific volume and temperature or specific volume and pressure. And we're doing this for single phase regions of this PVT space. And these are both just definitions, but the volume expansivity is the um, way that volume changes with temperature if you hold the pressure constant. And we define beta to be this change in volume with temperature for a constant pressure process divided by the specific volume, or times the density if you prefer. And this is the volume expansivity, and it's just a definition. We have a very similar isothermal compressibility that's how volume changes with pressure at constant temperature divided by the volume. But we put a negative on this one because we want the quantity to be positive. So as pressure increases, the volume decreases, but as temperature increases, the volume generally increases. Now if you combine these and consider V to be a function of temperature and pressure, then you can get this differential form, which says that dV over V is this volume expansivity minus kappa times the change in pressure. So, and this is great, and this is generally true because these are definitions. So this is general. Now, sometimes we can assume that beta and kappa are um, basically constant, okay? In liquids, this would definitely be the case that really, as long as you don't have huge changes in temperature and pressure, beta and kappa, if you know those numbers, would be a constant. And in that case, I can integrate this differential, and in that, and we end up with the natural log of the ratio of volume 2 over volume 1 is beta times T2 minus T1 minus kappa times P2 minus P1. So let's look at using that. In this example, we have liquid water at 25 degrees C one bar, and we're going to heat it to 50 degrees C. So we're going to go from 25 C to 50 degrees C. We're going to hold the volume constant, okay? And we know what beta and kappa are equal to. Now we have just derived this relationship that the log of V2 over V1 is beta times T2 minus T1 minus kappa times P2 minus P1. In this case, we're saying constant volume, therefore, this V2 over V1 is 1, log of 1 is 0, so this group is 0, and T2 and T1 are known, P1 is known, kappa and beta are known. So this simply becomes P2 equals beta times T2 minus T1 over kappa plus P1. And so if we substitute in our values, beta is 36.2 times 10 to the minus fifth, 1 over K, and this is 4.42 times 10 to the minus fifth, 1 over bar, the delta T is 25 degrees C, which is also 25 Kelvin. So those units cancel. The times 10 to the minus fifths cancel. Oh, and I'm going to add to that one bar. And so we end up with P2 is 3.05 bar. And this would be for liquid, which the ideal gas law wouldn't have worked for us. So this gives us an alternative. What we're going to be doing in the remainder of this chapter is we're going to be looking at different assumptions that we make. We will next be looking at ideal gases, but we'll also be looking at real gases, real liquids, multi-phase systems, and so forth. Thank you very much for your time.